Hello there, everyone. Welcome to Simple Delights. I'm your host, Eric. For today's home cooked recipe, we will be making one of these, a thermal detonator from Star Wars, the very tool Princess Leia used to convince Jabba the Hutt to sell Chewbacca to the Sarlacc pit. Now, before we get started, I want you to take a look in the description below. There you're gonna find two lists, one with all of the tools you're gonna to need, and the second with all the materials you're gonna to need to perform this build. These tools are gonna to be exactly what you need if you wanna do any future electronics project in the future. So if you're really interested in building small micro circuits like this and making small little props, I highly encourage you to take the time and the finances to invest in these tools and materials that you'll see in those lists. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the recipe and begin to build this little prop. To start this recipe, you're going to want to go ahead and check out the STL files in the description below, and you're going to want to download those and then put them into your 3D printer. Any type of material would suffice for your 3D printer. I personally like to use PETG as my material simply because it has a lot better thermal properties than your typical run-of-the-mill PLA. Now, I've already gone ahead and taken those STL files and put them into my printer. Oh, what's that? I think I hear my printer is ready and it's already finished. Let's go check it out. strong enough to take the eyes off of Gungar. Now that we've got our models printed, the first thing we're gonna to need to do is use a pair of pliers and go ahead and pull off all of the supports that makes up the bottom of the structure for the thermal detonator. So as soon as you knock off all the supports, let's go ahead and begin cleaning up the surface a bit to knock out all those little pesky layers you got there with your printed model. So for now, go ahead and set this part right here as well as this small little rectangular prism part aside for now. We're going to get to those guys a little bit later here. And for now, we're just going to focus on the shells of the model. So the first thing we need to do is we of course need to knock out the supports with some pliers. After you finish taking out those supports, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to clean up the surface that was left behind from the 3D print. I personally I'm a really big fan of this two-in-one filler and primer spray paint that you could pick up at your local hardware store. Now, I take about two to three layers of this stuff, and in combination with sandpaper, it will really clean up all those pesky little layers that are left behind that your 3D printer puts whenever you build up the model. So after you've gone ahead and applied this spray paint here and done a little bit of sanding to give you that nice, smooth surface you're looking for, you're gonna to wanna to try to get that final finish that's really going to sell that you have a thermal detonator. And the way to get to that is you're gonna to wanna to get your hands on some of this. This is Rub and Buff, and this is the magical ingredient that can turn oranges into Beskar armor. What you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna take small dabs of this stuff and place it onto your shells. Then, once you get those dabs on, you're gonna very aggressively rub it in until you create a little bit of heat friction from your rubbing into the model. And you're gonna to wanna to do that across the entire surface of both the shells, as well as the push button here. What you're doing is when you're rubbing in that rub and buff, you're creating friction heat that melts that wax into the shell and really allows that metallic finish to stick. Now, after you finish rub and buffing, Go ahead and take some model paints, any flavor, any size that you like, and apply details in any way your artistic heart desires. Hmm. And there you go. Your thermal detonator is looking sharper than Anakin Skywalker trying to seduce Padme on the sand planet of Tatooine. Talk about that. Now here's where things are gonna get a little bit interesting. We are going to construct the circuitry that is needed to give us the lighting effect. Let's start making the solder connections for the prop. To start, let's go ahead and grab this little guy right here, the battery for the prop. If for some reason you don't have access to a fancy schmancy insulation removal tool for wires, 
You can actually use an X-Acto knife and get just about the same results. Now here's a pretty Sith way to take care of that insulation on your wire. Take any generic piece of wire, kind of like what you see right here, and place it on your workbench. Now go ahead and grab your X-Acto knife and begin to lightly press it into the insulation of your wire. Gently roll the X-Acto knife over the insulation of the wire, being careful not to put too much force in there. Once you roll the X-Acto knife over the wire a few times, go ahead and take the end of the insulation of the wire and begin to twist it until it separates from the rest of the insulation. Now, while continuing that twisting motion, pull the insulation off of the wire to reveal the conductors underneath. Now that we've got that established, let's go ahead and build the actual prop. Start by taking the battery of the prop here, and you're going to want to do is we're going to cut off the lead of the battery approximately two to two and a half inches away from the base of the battery, kind of like what you see here. Take the lead of the battery and also give it about two to two and a half inches of distance with wire. You can do this by splicing additional lengths of wire and soldering that to the end of the lead. Go ahead and take your battery battery lead and set them aside for now. We'll be back with them momentarily. Now for this next step, you're going to want to whip out the lever switch that kind of looks like what you see here. Now go ahead and take some pliers and gently bend the lever of the switch here into a C shape, kind of like what you see right here. Don't worry, as we continue to build the prop, we're going to slowly make adjustments to the C shape here to be able to fit properly. What we're doing here is we're effectively making the switch that's going to actuate whenever we push down on the lever on the grenade to create the effect. Now go ahead and whip out that funky 3D print part that we printed earlier. Place the switch into this little channel you see right here until it's nice and snug. Ensure that the orientation of the lever is correct. Match it with what you see here in the video. Take a very small dab of super glue and lightly apply it in these areas here across the switch to lock it in place. Now go ahead and grab your battery, battery lead, and switch that looks like this. Position the switch and battery like you see here relative to this 3D printed part. We're going to be soldering cables through a channel here so that everything could fit properly together. Go ahead and take the power end of your battery and solder it to the central terminal here on the switch. Then take the power end of your battery's lead and solder that to one of the side terminals on the switch. After doing these connections, let's go ahead and cut out a red power wire of about 3 inches in length. Take one end of that wire and solder it to the remaining side piece of that connector. Basically this switch is acting as our on-off button. Whenever it's switched to the off position, where it's pointing towards the battery lead, we can actually freely charge the battery. Then when we switch over to the battery end, we can actually allow it to function. So go ahead and take this little assembly we just made and set them aside just for now. We'll come right back to it. Now let's swap over to the two resistors that we're going to need. We'll find it here in our little resistor kit. And here we go, our two different resistors we're going to need. A 10 ohm and 10k resistor. These little guys are imperative to making sure we don't burn out our LEDs, as well as making sure the signals we're sending are actually just for the switch. For each resistor, cut off the ends to a length of about one quarter inch. Fortunately, resistors are nonpolar, so it doesn't matter what direction they are oriented. Go ahead and cut out four black ground wires, each measuring one and a half inches approximately. Okay. 
solder each wire to each end of the resistor. Set aside the resistors. Make sure you know which resistor is which. Now, let's create a grounded wiring harness. Start off by cutting out a 1.5 inch and 2 inch black crown wire. Solder the ends of the black crown wire, kind of like what you see here. And then go ahead and set them aside for now. Next up, the lever switch. Start by cutting out a black ground wire, a yellow signal wire, and a red power wire that each are about one and a half inches long. Grab that assembly from earlier. Solder both the black ground wire and yellow signal wire to the common end of the switch, ensuring that the solder connection is on the inside of the switch. For the red power wire, solder it to the connection that is nominally open. When looking at the switch, it's the connection that has a break in the signal, as shown here. Set aside the assembly again. Let's go ahead now and talk a little bit about the LEDs. We're going to start here with the red LED that's going to situate itself on the top part of the thermal detonator. Start by cutting out a black ground wire and a brown signal wire that are 3 inches in length each. Then, cut the two leads of the LED to about a quarter inch in length. Do note that the longer lead indicates the positive end of the LED. It is very important to remember this. Solder the brown signal wire to the positive lead on the LED and the black ground wire to the other lead. Then, carefully bend the soldered ends of the LED to a 90 degree angle, kind of like this. Finally, take out your finished top end of the thermal detonator and push the LED into the hole with the wires pointing downwards, like this. Then, you guessed it, set aside that shell assembly for now. Now last and most certainly not least part of this project may as well be the hardest and most difficult part, so pay close attention. Or you'll have to sit through a comedy routine by Yoda. Do or do not, there is no funny in that. Now, we are going to be making the solder connections for the three LEDs that are gonna sit here on the lower shell of the thermal detonator. Now, as you're probably figuring out, there isn't a whole lot of room inside of the prop, so we can't use any fancy smancy T-caps or other electrical equipment to make the solder connections. So we're gonna to have to switch to good old splicing to do this one. So get your steady hands in check, loosen up those muscles, and get ready. Let's get technical. To start this, cut three black ground wires, two being one and a half inches long, and the other being three inches long. Now, take the three inch long wire and lightly cut into the insulation with an X-Acto knife at three quarters and one and a quarter inches from one of the edges. Go ahead and take the two other wires and solder all three wires together, creating a forked wiring harness like you see here. Now go ahead and cut out three different colored signal wires at three inches each. I chose to use green, white, and blue. Go ahead and pull out three white LEDs cutting the lead ends so that they're each about a quarter inch in length. Remember that the longer end is the positive end of the LED. Solder one of the signal wires to each positive end of each LED. Then take the forked ground wiring harness and solder each end of the fork to the negative end of the LEDs, creating an assembly that looks like this. Now carefully bend each lead approximately 90 degrees to create this. Pull out the lower shell of the thermal detonator and position it to line up with each port. 
Then, take some super glue and apply an honest amount to the connection. You may need to do one LED at a time. Now it's time to put everything into the thermal detonator. This is where everything finally comes together. You will either rise up in a blaze of glory, or you will fall into the fiery pits of Mustafar. Now go ahead and grab this little assembly we worked on a little bit earlier. We're going to go ahead and take the resistors right here and install them. Look for the section of this 3D printed part that has four small holes. Carefully take your resistors and feed them through the holes in this orientation, where the resistor is facing towards the center. I prefer to place the 10K ohm resistor in the upper slot and the 10 ohm resistor in the lower slot. Take a small dab of super glue to lock those resistors in place. So real quick, we're going to be doing a test fit to make sure everything fits to our satisfaction before we go in and commit to the assembly. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the battery and the on-off switch and we're just going to quickly install them inside and see how everything looks. So we'll go ahead and take the battery, flip it around, and put the bottom end of the battery in like this to the assembly. Kind of like that. And then take this switch here, make sure all the wires are going through through the 3D printed part, kind of like this, if you can see that. And you're just gonna insert it in like this. So let me just make sure that all goes in pretty well. So that, there we go. And there you have it. Now go ahead and grab the bottom shell of your prop, take this guy, and you're gonna have it facing kind of like this with the top of the switch facing upward relative to the prop. And you're just gonna kind of situate it inside of the shell, making sure the wires aren't being snugged or anything too severe to damage anything. And you'll basically just push this in until the top surface of that 3D printed part lays more or less flush with the top of the bottom shell here. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the top of the assembly here, so this top little shell here, and we're gonna place him on top and actually put everything together. Basically what we're doing here is we're gonna make sure that this C that we've shaped out here for the switch is actually gonna actuate. Because if it doesn't, then we have to take everything apart and reorganize everything, and that just isn't a good time. So let's go ahead and try that real fast. Go ahead and place this little guy in here, kind of like this. There we go. There it is. So now you're going to take the top of your switch, this little switch button right here, and you're just going to kind of place it inside like this. And all you're going to do is just make sure it actuates. And in my case, it seems to work. Look at that. And it's okay if you have your, your button all the way out kind of like this, because what we're gonna do is we're going to install some Velcro in a little bit to actually mount it. So check that out, that's what you want right there. That's gonna be the, that's what's gonna turn on and off the prop right there. Now we are going to be getting to uh, this little guy right here, the brains of the prop. Now go ahead and make sure that the pins on the board are facing in this direction, away from the top of the board. That's pretty important when we assemble this into the assembly. Now go ahead and place the board here on the assembly. Now take the open end of the power wire from the switch assembly and route that to solder into the pin on the board that is labeled BAT or B-A-T battery. Take the yellow signal wire from the lever switch and solder that to the pin labeled number 4. Take the black ground wire from the lever switch and solder that to one end of the 10K ohm resistor. Then take the other open end of the 10K ohm resistor as well as the 10 ohm resistor end and solder that to the longer end of the forked grounded wiring harness that we made earlier.
guide the grounded wiring harness through the channel like this. Solder both the battery and battery lead ground ends together on one of the ends of the grounded wiring harness. Solder the remaining end of the grounded wiring harness to the pin labeled ground or GND. Finally, take the grounded wire from both the red and white LEDs and solder them into one of the open ends of the 10 ohm resistor, kind of like what you see here, creating a forked connection. We're almost done, but here comes a really important step, so don't deviate. Take the brown signal wire from the red LED and solder that into the pin labeled number one. For the red power wire from the lever switch, solder that into the pin labeled three volts or three V. Now, depending on the order of your three white LEDs here, will entirely dictate where you're going to be soldering these three wires to on your microcontroller. Now, this prop operates like a timer, so the order of these three LEDs and where they're soldered is critically important to getting that effect done. Whatever light you want to light up first, solder that LED signal wire to the pin labeled number zero. Take the center LED signal wire and solder that to the pin labeled number two. And finally, take the last LED signal wire and solder that to the pin labeled number three. And all right, look at that, we've gotten all the electronics installed. Whew. Oh, that was a lot. But don't worry, we are just about finished with this recipe. Now that we've set up everything with the electronics, it's time to actually bring life into the electronics and tell the Arduino board what to do. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna download the Arduino IDE software that's going to be able to allow us to put a script from this into this to give us the final effect. In the description, you'll see a link to download the Arduino IDE software. Go ahead and download that, as well as the script file that's in there as well. That script file is pretty important because that's gonna be the file that takes all of this and puts it into this. Now, it's important to note that this little Arduino board we installed in here is not your average run-of-the-mill Arduino board. As a matter of fact, it takes a little bit more effort to get this to get up and running on your Arduino IDE software. So, I highly encourage you to go check out the Adafruit link in the description below, and it gives you a little small detailed tutorial about how to get this little guy up and running with your IDE. Don't worry, it's pretty simple and would take you less than five minutes to do. Connect your microcontroller to your computer via USB. Open the script file from the description. Press the reset button on the microcontroller and click Upload to the IDE. Once the software is uploaded, your props should now be fully operational. Now go ahead and place everything back together, ensuring wires are not being pinched, and that the switch is correctly positioned. Take some Velcro and cut out a small section to fit on top of the lever where the button will contact, and the bottom of the button. You should get something like this. Close up the shells on the prop and place the button into the slot here. Now, every time you press down on the button, the prop will activate. Clicking the button again and holding will speed the sequence and turn off the prop function. Whenever you're not using your prop, Simply take off the top shell carefully and flip the switch here to fully turn off the power. In order to charge the battery, make sure the switch is set to the off position. If the switch is set to the on position, the battery is not going to charge. And then go ahead and plug your charger into the battery lead. And that's it. One extremely technical and elongated tutorial later, you're now the proud owner of a thermal detonator prop that can come to life. I hope this recipe was as fun for you as it was for me to cook up. It always brings a smile on my face to be able to take simple items like this and bring life to them. 
Now, fly my young Padawans. Go and enjoy your freshly built prop. Impress friends, scare your peers, and make everybody believe you're on an FBI watch list. Now, with that, I hope to see each and every one of you on my next installment of Simple Delights. I'm your host, Eric. Take care now. Bye-bye then.